students I welcome you back to the lecture series on course material of transportation engineering 2. Uh, from the previous some of the lectures we have started with the airport engineering part and we have already discussed some of the important uh, factors or aspects related to airport engineering. This covers not only the site selection or the size of the airport, but also the obstructions and the flight rules. We have also looked at that how we can fix up the orientation of the runway and what may be the different type of configurations of runways and how they create an effect in terms of the capacity which can be handled by any of the airport. In continuation of the runway design, in today's lecture, we will be looking at the runway length. In this lecture, it is being outlined in two parts that is the basic runway length and the corrections to basic runway length. We will be starting with the first one that is the basic runway length and we will try to look at the various factors which creates an effect on basic runway length. In the case of basic runway length, the length is calculated under the following conditions or by making the assumptions like there is no wind blowing on the runway this is the very first assumption. So, as to take into consideration the effect of the wind because uh, if there is no wind then uh, uh, whatever the stopping distance is required on the runway will be the normal stopping distance, but if the wind is there and that is from the head side then obviously it is going to reduce it whereas if it is from the tail end side then it will increase the length of the runway. So, the assumption here is that there is no wind and in that condition we will try to compute the value of runway and then make uh, corrections related to wind. Then another assumption is that the aircraft is loaded with full loading capacity. This is another assumption because uh, uh, it has its effect uh, not only on the speed with which the aircraft will be moving with respect to the propulsion power which is being provided on that aircraft, but at the same time it will also be having its effect on the thickness of the pavement being provided. Another assumption is that the airport is provided at the sea level because at the sea level the meteorological conditions are at its standard. So, with respect to those standard values then whatever variations are there we will be considering those variations while calculating the length of the runway strip. So, this is another assumption Then no wind is blowing on the way to destination is another thing. Uh, so, that uh, uh, we know that at what particular point the aircrafts will be landing or how they have to take off. So, this is another aspect uh, which is taken into consideration. Then the another is the related to the terrain or related to the topography that is the runway is leveled and it is provided with 0 effective gradient. Uh, we will be looking at the what this effective gradient when in the due course of time, but uh, this is one assumption then the standard temperature is uh, 15 degree centigrade at the airport and this is the temperature which is taken with respect to the sea level. So, that is why when we are assuming that the airport is at sea level then the standard temperature is being taken with respect to that and it is 15 degree centigrade and a standard temperature exists along the way that is along the pathway also. Uh, this is another assumption. So, based on these assumptions then we try to calculate the length of the runway and if there is any deviation from these assumptions then the correction has to be provided. So, that the length of the runway can be increased or decreased accordingly. So, uh, these are the things which otherwise will also be creating an effect on the length of the runway and its computation and that is what we will be looking at when we will go to the computation of the runway length based on different correction factors. Now, in this case when we look at the various factors which are going to create its effect on the runway length then they can be categorized under the three broad headings. The uh, headings may be or the major factors may be the aircraft characteristics, the safety requirements and the airport environment. Now, we will be discussing about the various aspects related to these broad categories of the factors and uh, in the case of aircraft characteristics, uh, the very first thing which is going to create an effect is uh, the power and the propulsion system. Now, as we have seen that in the case of uh, uh, an aircraft which is landing or which is taking off, 
the power is uh, one of the important aspects which creates this effect or the propulsion system which is being provided is uh, the one which uh, finally gets transformed into the power. So, uh, here what we are understanding is that uh, uh, if the power is more then the aircraft requires a longer length so as to stop because it has there is a certain rate of deacceleration and with that rate of deacceleration the vehicle or the aircraft will be going to stop. Similarly, when there is a takeoff condition in the case of takeoff condition if the power is more then the lift can be generated early and therefore, it can move into the air much earlier, but then at the same time uh, if the load is more than uh, it takes a little more distance. Whereas, in the case of a smaller uh, aircrafts we have to see that uh, uh, in this case the length of the runway strip which is required because of the propulsion system or because of the power which is uh, much lesser as compared to the bigger aircrafts uh, that length of the runway may be also lesser. So, we have to look at that what are the effects of the power which is being provided on any of the aircraft and then with respect to that the length of the runway is to be examined. Now, another effect is uh, the type of an aircraft. Now, in this case when we are talking about the type of the aircraft there is one uh, technical word or technical notation which is used and that is critical aircraft. The critical aircraft is defined as being the aircraft type which the airport is intended to serve and which requires the greatest runway length. So, uh, this is what is the definition of the critical aircraft and uh, the definition itself tries to define that we have to look at that particular aircraft which requires the maximum length and obviously, uh, in the case of the propulsive power or in the case of uh, uh, the power which is available with the aircraft it comes out to be the biggest type of the aircraft uh, which will be using that airport. Uh, so, as to identify this critical aircraft what we do is that we have flight manual performance data of the variety of aircrafts are examined and this is the one type of data which we have already seen when we uh, tried to see the characteristics of uh, aircrafts and then we have compared the characteristics of different uh, uh, types of the aircrafts like the airbuses of a different categories of airbuses or similarly the Boeings and uh, there we have seen that the performance data is related to uh, the weight characteristics to the fuel characteristics to the uh, range to the seating capacity to the total load which can be taken up to the structural uh, loading condition in terms of takeoffs or in terms of uh, landings or the fuel etcetera. So, uh, on the basis of that then we can examine that which is going to be the critical aircraft that is the one aircraft which requires the greatest runway length. Now, having determined this critical aircraft the longest distance is determined from analyzing both takeoff and landing performance. So, that is uh, uh, the thing like we have to analyze the both of the conditions if the aircraft is landing then how much length is required and if the aircraft is taking off then in that case what is the length required. Now, out of these two lengths which have been computed the maximum required will be taken up as the length of the runway. Therefore, uh, this is another important thing which is to be done so as to identify uh, so as to compute the length of the runway uh, as far as the aircraft characteristics is concerned. Then within the aircraft characteristics the another important thing is the gross takeoff and landing weights of the aircraft. Now, these gross takeoff or gross landing weight of the aircraft has its effect at the time when the aircraft is taking off or it is landing respectively. Now, in this case what happens is that if uh, there is a heavy takeoff load then obviously, the aircraft will require more of the power and so as to get this more of the power it has to run more distance and by running that particular more distance it will be reaching that velocity at which there will be a possibility of attaining the lift or the lift becomes more than the weight which is otherwise acting in the downward direction. So, if that uh, condition is achieved then only the aircraft will be going into the air. So, that is the effect of the takeoff load uh, 
for the aircraft and in case of a runway length there will be more length required if there is a higher takeoff gross weight. In the case of the landing weight uh, this, uh, this is another condition where uh, we are talk, uh, looking at uh, the effect of this weight where it acts again in the downward direction but then due to the effect of this weight. Uh, what we can see is that again the, there will be a change in the length of the runway strip because of the uh, velocity with which it will be moving. Uh, another characteristic of the aircraft which can create its effect is uh, the two type of the things. So one is the structure which is being provided and the one is the uh, mechanical characteristics which have been provided within that aircraft. Now in the case of the structure. Uh, if it has a aerodynamic structure then obviously the frictions are lesser and then uh, the effect of the resistance being offered by the air mass in the front direction uh, will become lesser. So in that case it will be going to move uh, more distance as compared to the another condition where the structure is not aerodynamic and it is a blunt sort of a situation. Similarly, in the case of mechanical characteristics we have to look at uh, uh, the various types of the mechanical components and their effects. It may be in terms of uh, uh, say the uh, landing systems being provided at the time of the landing that is uh, uh, the wheel bases and the way these wheel bases moves in or moves out of the structure of uh, an aircraft. So that is uh, one thing. Uh, which is uh, being governed by the velocity with which it is going to touch the ground at the time of the landing. So that particular system should be supportive enough you know, without having any failure at the time of uh, uh, the landing. So because uh, at the time of landing the speeds are so high that uh, it creates a very heavy thermal stress condition. So due to that thermal stresses or due to that uh, uh, energy which is getting dissipated at the point of contact of uh, the aircraft with the pavement surface uh, these mechanical devices may get damaged and that is where we have to look at uh, uh, these uh, different type of systems. Then apart from the uh, characteristics of the aircraft the another requirement is this maintaining the safety. Now uh, in this case when we are trying to maintain the safety then we have to look again on the two conditions that is uh, the aircraft may take off or the aircraft may be landing. Apart from these two conditions the another condition is the emergency condition where the aircraft while taking off uh, found that there is a snag in the aircraft and therefore the aircraft has to be stopped or it is started taking off and then it is being observed that there is some problem on the aircraft maybe uh, there is a problem with the engine or there is some uh, mal functioning of any of the equipment on board of the aircraft then the aircraft has to return. So in those two conditions so then uh, we require certain length and we have to look at that whether there is a requirement of increasing the length or if it is so then how for by how much value that is to be done. So therefore uh, the three conditions needs to be examined for the normal landing condition, for the normal takeoff condition and for stopping under emergency conditions. Now in the case of uh, normal landing condition the aircraft should come to a stop within 60 percent of the landing distance assuming that the pilot makes an approach at the proper speed and crosses the threshold of the runway at a height of 15 meter. So uh, there is the assumption being made that the pilot knows what to do and what the pilot is supposed to do is that uh, the pilot has to cross with the aircraft the threshold of the runway that is the end of the runway uh, at a height of 15 meter. So that should be the height of the aircraft and then there is a certain speed at which it has to cross and approach the landing strip. So if that is being done then in that case the aircraft is going to stop within 60 percent of the overall landing distance to be provided otherwise. And uh, in this case because the landing is being done with complete loading therefore the payment is to be provided with the full strength on the entire length of uh, the landing runway 
a strip. So uh, that is the way how we try to compute the value of the runway length in the case of the uh, normal landing condition. Now we will try to look at the same aspect uh, in this figure because uh, this is the runway strip being provided and this is uh, somewhere here is the runway threshold. Uh, in the case of uh, the markings this threshold will be at some distance away from the end of uh, uh, the runway strip. But uh, just we assume in this diagram that suppose the threshold is somewhere here, then the aircraft has to come at this threshold and cross the threshold at a height of 15 meters. And then it will be coming down and will be touching this runway strip at some point and that point is known as touch down point. And that is also generally uh, defined that by uh, crossing up to this value then at what distance the aircraft should touch down. And then after that it will start uh, reducing the speed initially by using the flaps and then slowly and slowly it will come to a very lesser value and uh, it is going to get stopped at this location. So if this is the condition then this is this particular distance being moved from uh, this end to the this stopping point this is termed as 60 percent of the landing distance. So, in that case this is going to be the overall landing distance and this overall strip of the runway which is used for landing is to be provided in complete full strength means it should be able to take up uh, from this point to this point the load which is designated for any of the big aircraft at the time of landing. Therefore, the field length as we try to calculate the length of the runway strip is that the field length will be nothing but the landing distance L d that is uh, uh, we are talking about this landing distance, landing distance is this L d. So, the field uh, length will be the same of that one and this landing distance is stopping distance divided by 0 0.60 because this is 60 percent. And uh, another thing as we have discussed is that the length of the full strength runway will remain the same as equals to the landing distance that is L d. Now we look at the another condition that is normal takeoff condition. Now in the case of normal takeoff condition the takeoff distance must be for a specific weight of aircraft 115 percent of the actual distance the aircraft uses to reach a height of 10.5 meters. That is how it tries to define uh, the requirement of the length. Uh, here what it says is that uh, uh, when that aircraft is taking off then it should attain a height of 10.5 meters and uh, uh, whatever is the distance being moved so as to attain the height of 10.5 meters the length of the runway strip should be 115 percent of that actual distance. And the distance to reach a height of this 10.5 meters should be equal to 115 percent of the lift of distance and it requires a clear way at the end of the runway in the direction of takeoff because uh, uh, we are moving away from the runway strip and therefore in this case if there is an emergency or uh, the aircraft is not being able to take up this distance just at the end of the runway strip then this clear way will help in the form that it will maintain the safety. That is why this clear way has to be provided in that direction where the takeoff is going on. But in the direction where the landing is going on there is no need of providing these clear ways. And uh, this should not be less than 150 meter wide. The upward slope of the clear way from the end of the runway shall not exceed 1.25 percent. That is the uh, sort of the specification which is uh, required for any clear way being provided. Now uh, this is a diagram which tries to depict the same condition that the aircraft is starting from this direction and then it is starting moving in this direction and then at this particular point it just moves into the air. So that is uh, this is the point after moving this much distance it attains the lift and it is moving like this and it should be able to take a height of 10.5 meters at the end and here the clear way is being provided after the end of the runway strip. So here uh, this distance up to which it has moved on the ground is known as lift off distance. That is the distance after which there is a lift. 
then 100 percent of this 115 percent of uh, this lift of distance is suppose comes to this particular position. And uh, this is the distance which is to be moved so as to attain a height of 10.5 meters as being shown here. Then the takeoff distance is going to be the 115 percent of the distance which is required to move a height of 10.5 meters that is if this is 10.5 meters then the takeoff distance is going to be 115 percent of that. So, we come up to this value then from this value we go back in terms of uh, uh, the uh, this uh, length of the clear way which is again being specified and uh, the distance between this 115 percent of the lift of distance that is uh, this point and this point being provided this uh, this is uh, uh, the clear way distance uh, this is should be half of this distance. So, this clear way should be half of this total distance. So, that is how we try to fix up the various distances in this uh, normal takeoff condition and we compute the value of the runway strip. So, uh, this is uh, uh, how it will look like in the plan where this is a runway strip and at the end of the runway strip a clear way is being provided where the uh, minimum width of this clear way is 150 meters on this side. And this runway strip is to be provided with full strength means the thickness of the pavement is start from the start to the end should be same, it should not differ. Now, as far as the calculations are concerned here the field length will be the full strength runway plus clear way that is what is the total length of the strip. And here the takeoff distance will be 1.15 times the distance required for attaining a height of 10.5 meters and the clear way will be half of the takeoff distance minus 1.15 times of the lift of distance that is LOD whereas the takeoff uh, run it will be uh, the takeoff distance minus the clear way uh, length and the length of the full strength runway is going to be again the same equals to the takeoff run. So, that is how the various values can be computed for normal takeoff condition. Then the another condition is the stopping in emergency. Now, what happens in this case is that uh, there may be an engine failure case and in this engine failure phase the takeoff distance uh, I, is a before coming actual distance required to uh, reach a height of 10.5 meters with no uh, percentage applied in this case. What happens is that the aircraft is trying to attain the speed and while trying to attain the speed means it is taking accelerating. Now, after some distance it is being moved it uh, the pilot observes that there is some problem on the aircraft and therefore, the aircraft has to be stopped. It means after that point it will start deaccelerating and once it starts deaccelerating then it will be requiring some distance so as to stop the aircraft. On the case is that uh, uh, it, when the engine failure condition is there and it is started taking off uh, and then it is reaching a height of 10.5 meter then here without applying to any percentages we have to find out in the actual condition what is the overall length which needs to be provided so as to stop the vehicle without creating any problem for the safety concerns. Now, the aircraft accelerates to a speed to V1 before finding that the engine has failed and then it starts deaccelerating to stop at the end therefore, it requires a stop way along with a clear way. So, that is a requirement of uh, another type of a facility another type of a construction which is to be provided at the end of the runway strip in the direction of taking off. Now, this is stopway is defined as a rectangular paved area at the end of the runway in the direction of take, take off in which an aircraft can be stopped after an interrupted takeoff due to engine failure and its width is at least equal to the width of the runway strip or it may be more than that. Now, this is the diagram which tries to show the same thing that uh, the aircraft is uh, starting from this location and then it starts accelerating. So, it from the 0 value it is accelerating to a speed V1 and at this point it is observed that there is a failure of engine. Therefore, it starts deaccelerating 
and then it will going to stop. So, there is a deacceleration stop distance V to be provided and uh, if we assume that it is going to stop by this point then this is what is the deaccelerate stop distance which is starts from this position and goes up to this point. And uh, this distance being more than the length of the runway strip we are providing a stop way and the end. Uh, in the normal condition if the aircraft would have moved with the same rate of acceleration then uh, this is the point at which the aircraft could have got the lift off and then in that case this was the flight path uh, which the aircraft would have taken. Now here what we are looking at is that this takeoff distance now in this case is going to be related to a height of 10.5 meters which is provided at some distance away and this some distance uh, uh, away is calculated on the basis of the uh, length of the clear way and the distance being provided between the lift of point and the end as being done previously. So, we have the stop way and this stop way is within the clear way which comes up to this value. So, here we are having this height as 10.5 meters. So, uh, this is accelerate, this is what is accelerate and stop distance. So, it comes up to this value. Uh, on the basis of uh, this lift off distance and on the basis of the take off distance required for 10.5 meter height in this case, even if for that condition where even with the engine failure the aircraft is going to take off. Now, because at this particular point what happens is that uh, as the uh, uh, pilot has observed that there is a failure of engine, it, the pilot will shift to the standby engine or if there is no requirement then this engine will be shut off and the aircraft will be moving with the rest of the engines available on board. Therefore, there is some time being lost and due to that loss of time in this 10.5 meter instead of having at the end of the runway strip will get displaced so some distance away and that will be displaced by a distance equals to the length of the clear way. That is why in the previous uh, case when we have discussed about the normal takeoff the 10.5 meter was here, but in this case it is at this location. Here also this lift off point has uh, moved away to this location whereas in the previous case it was somewhere nearer to this end. And this is how it looks like this is the full strength uh, runway strip and at the end of the runway strip a stop way is being provided and then on the sides of this stop way and away from this one there is a clear way and this clear way again is having a minimum width of 150 meters. So, this stop way is also going to be a full strength condition. Now, here again the, these are the calculations the engine failure takeoff proceed case the field length is equals to the full strength runway plus the clear way. Takeoff distance will be equals to the distance required to attain a height of 10.5 meters whereas clear way will be half of the takeoff distance minus uh, the lift off distance LOD and the take off this run is uh, equals to the take off distance plus the uh, clear way whereas the length of the full strength runway will be equals to the take off run that is uh, this particular distance. Uh, another case is that there is an engine failure and the take off is aborted means now we are not going to take off it is being decided to stop then in that case the field length will be the full strength runway plus a stop way instead of clear way now it will be taken as a stop way and uh, then this uh, FL will be the accelerate stop distance that is for the full length condition field length condition. Uh, now another thing here which we are going to discuss is the effect of uh, the different type of the engines where if, uh, we are being provided with a jet engine or a piston engine then we have to look at that uh, uh, which particular condition needs to be evaluated in these cases. Now, in the case of the jet engine all the three conditions which we have discussed so far needs to be evaluated where in the case of piston engine only first and the third case is evaluated the second case of takeoff is not evaluated. The case giving the longest runway length is finally recommended as the basic runway length. So, uh, what we see is that the runway length required uh, can be computed as the field distance is the maximum of uh, 
the case of uh, take off distance in second case and third case and then uh, the various other values as being noted here. Similarly, full strength runway can be the maximum of the three values. Then a stop way uh, is uh, computed as a difference between the, uh, the values for acceleration and uh, is stopping and the maximum of the three values as computed previously where a similar clear way is going to be the minimum value out of uh, uh, the clear way length being computed in second and third case and uh, 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 the difference between the field length and the distance for accelerator and stopping condition. Uh, in this case, uh, the stop way minimum will be 0, the clear way minimum will be 0 where the maximum clear way can be of 300 meters. Now, we come to the ICO specifications for uh, field runway length and it says this specifies four declared distances as takeoff run available known as TORA, takeoff distance available that is TODA which is TORA plus clear way that is takeoff run available plus clear way, accelerate stop distance available that is ASDA which is TORA plus uh, stop way, TORA again for run available and landing distance available is termed as LDA. Uh, it also specify 5 cases as uh, uh, the first case is uh, with no clear uh, length and the stop way and with no displaced threshold the 4 declared distances are normally equal to the length of the runway. In the second case when the runway is provided with the clear way then take off uh, distance will be included uh, will include the clear way length and when the third case is when the runway is provided with the uh, stop way then uh, ASDA will include the length of uh, the stop way. Then the fourth case says that when the runway has a displaced threshold uh, then LDA will be reduced by the distance the threshold is displaced and this displaced threshold at one end will affect the LDA for approaches made to the threshold. And the final case is that when the CL, SW and a displaced threshold is provided then we have to find out what is the length. Uh, the same sort of the things have been depicted here then in this case uh, uh, that is a case 1 where it is talking about the take off run available and take off distance available and then this is ASDA and LDA lift off distance available. They all are same in the first case where in the second case what we see is a clear wage length is being provided at the end and therefore take off distance will be considering this clear wave length also whereas the take off run available will be up to the end of the runway strip and the start of the clear way length and this will also be equal to the ASDA and LDA in this case. Then in the case, third case uh, which we have discussed here the stop way is being provided and this is stop way means it in uh, the ASDA uh, accelerating stopping distance available will be equals to uh, this TORA plus uh, the stop way. And this TORA, the takeoff run available, will be equals to AOD and LDA. In the case of the fourth one, which we just discussed, it, there is a displaced threshold being provided. Means instead of starting from this point, this uh, runway is assumed to start from this point, and therefore lift off distance available will be computed from this point onwards instead of this point onwards. Whereas the takeoff uh, run available will be assumed from the initial location only and that is going to be again the equivalent to TODA and ASDA. This is the final case uh, which we have discussed uh, along with the uh, displaced threshold and here in this case the stop way is also provided and a clear way is also being provided along with this. And therefore, the various distances being calculated will, will be the lift of distance available will be calculated from the threshold distance up to the start of the stop way whereas the take off distance available will be the overall length of the runway strip and uh, the available stop uh, uh, accelerating stop distance available will be up to the center point of uh, the clear way being provided whereas the take off distance available and this case finally will be this uh, final value also. So, this is how the ICA declares the various type of uh, runway strips. 
Now another concept in while uh, finding out the runway length is the balanced field concept. In the case of this balanced field concept, uh, uh, in the case of a piston engine aircraft, a designated engine failure speed is so chosen by the manufacturer that the distance required to stop from the point where the VF was reached, that is the failure speed was reached, final speed was reached, was equal to the distance from the same point to reach a specified height of 10.5 meter above the runway. Uh, that is uh, the concept by which it is being defined that how we can compute or how we can find out this value of VF in the case there is an engine failure means it is what it tries to say is that uh, the distance which is being moved and at which the failure is being observed is going to be the and then after that it is going to stop they are going to be the same distance and equivalent to the half of the distance required to attain a height of 10.5 meter above the runway strip. And uh, uh, in this case the result is that it is provides the shortest distance of the runway. So, this is a, a diagram uh, which is being provided for the turbine powered aircrafts which uh, depicts the aircraft speed at the time the engine fails and this is the length which is required of the runway strip and then it is uh, dependent on uh, the various aspects like uh, this graph shows the lift of distance uh, at different speeds. So, we can find out that the lift of distance at different speeds like if we are talking about this one then this much is the length which is required so as to stop uh, so as to get a lift at this speed. So, this is how the things can be correlated where this is a takeoff full strength runway required condition. So, takeoff distance uh, will can be computed with respect to this line and uh, this is uh, another graph which uh, tries to define the takeoff distance to attain a height of 10.5 uh, uh, meters. So, that is uh, another one and then uh, there is this uh, one this is uh, defining trying to define the accelerate stop distance and wherever this is cutting the another one that provides the balanced field length. So, this balanced field length LD is basically required. So, there are different lengths which can be computed like uh, the length L A which is related to the takeoff with full strength length L B uh, which is a condition uh, which equivalent to the balanced field condition, but uh, at the takeoff condition where there is a distance of a stop we being provided and then L D is related to uh, this uh, curve where this is a takeoff distance uh, curve being provided and uh, then so L E and L F they are the other two values on the same these two curves. So, uh, we have to look at uh, on the basis of this one the computations can be done and there is one case where we assume that this uh, velocity V is equivalent to the velocity V F and this velocity V F uh, uh, is uh, dependent on this V which is selected from the graph uh, which we have seen just now. And then on the basis of that the uh, length of the stop wave or the clear wave will be computed on the basis of the two values which we have found out that is L D minus L V and the uh, uh, field length of the stop wave and the complete field length will be computed as L V and L D respectively. Whereas, there can be another case too where the speed is less than the failure speed. In that case uh, the values of uh, the full strength uh, runway strip the full the field length of the runway or the clear way or the stop way will be given as being shown uh, here in terms of as L C L E or the difference between L E and L C respectively where uh, for a stop weight will be a 0 value. Now, in the case of the turbine powered aircraft in the case 3 uh, where the this speed is greater than the uh, failure speed designated failure speed which can be there then in that case uh, for this full strength one it is L given by L A whereas for the field length it is given by L F and for its stop weight is given by L F minus L A. So, uh, because the speed is more here therefore, the stop weights to be provided the and it is part of the clear way. Uh, now, we come to some of the other factors which are quite important so as to 
find out the basic runway length and that is the airport environment. Airport environment in comprises of atmosphere where the temperature and surface wind is to be considered and uh, uh, the effect of this temperature and surface wind is to be uh, taken into consideration. We will look at these things while we discuss further. Whereas another thing is the location and condition of the runway where uh, it is to be take considered in terms of two factors that is altitude and the runway gradient. Now, in the case of atmosphere, the standard atmosphere is defined as the temperature at mean sea level of 15 degrees centigrade, pressure at mean sea level as 760 mm of uh, mercury, air density as 1.225 kg per cubic meter. So, if there is a variation with respect to these values, then the basic runway length has to be adjusted. Uh, in the case of temperature, it is taken as the temperature at mean sea level. Then there is another temperature which is to be computed that is termed as the airport reference temperature which is dependent on the altitude uh, with respect to the mean sea level. Then there is a standard temperature at an elevation. So, we have to compute this one also and then there is a monthly mean of average daily temperature for the hottest month of the year. Whatever is the hottest month of the year, we take the average of that. And similarly, for the same month, we also take the value of uh, uh, maximum daily temperature uh, of the same month. So, that is uh, that mean of the two type of the means have to be taken up uh, average and the maximum value of the hottest month. Now, these two values we will be using so as to compute the value of aircraft airport reference temperature and the standard temperature with respect to elevation will also be computed. This is how we will be doing. Now, here in this case of the airport reference temperature that is AFT, it will be T1 plus one third of the difference between T2 and T1, where T2 and T1 are what? They are T1 is the monthly mean of average daily temperature for the hottest month of the year, whereas T2 is the monthly mean of the maximum daily temperature of the same month. So, this is how we define the T1 and T2. So, we have got the mean values of average and mean value of the maximum and then we use them so as to compute the value of AFT. Similarly, this is standard temperature at an elevation can be computed as uh, temperature at mean sea level plus oblique minus the rate of change of temperature multiplied with elevation. So, we have to look at at what particular rate as we go above mean sea level the temperature changes whether it is increasing or it is decreasing. So, on the basis of that we will be taking a plus or a minus value. So, temperature at mean sea level is 15 degree centigrade and whatever rate is being provided with respect to the height then it is multiplied with height will give us uh, the standard temperature which will be available at the site of the airport. So, here the R is the rate of uh, change of temperature with height or depth above or below mean sea level and this is generally given as degree centigrade per meter. So, if in that case if uh, height is the H and R is the rate then it will be as 15 plus or minus H multiplied by R. So, plus is taken if the temperature is increasing with the height or depth and negative is taken if the temperature is decreasing with the height or depth with respect to the mean sea level. Now, what is the effect of temperature that needs to be examined? What happens is that is uh, temperature reduces the air density and if the airport is located within the stratosphere that is up to 11 kilometer height above mean sea level uh, in this particular uh, sphere what happens is the temperature decreases with height. Now, as the temperature is decreasing with the height, uh, therefore, what we found is that there is an effect of uh, the change in the air density and that air density creates an effect in terms of the resistance being offered to the movement of the aircraft at that elevation. Thus, uh, uh, what will be the effect will uh, is that it will reduce the drag on the aircraft while landing or it will require longer distance for producing necessary lift for the aircraft to fly. So, uh, that is the effect which will be there in this case. Uh, it means we are going to have a, high, a bigger size of the airport as compared to the normal condition. So, increase basically in the runway length is at the rate of uh, being 1 percent for every 1 degree centigrade rise in airport reference temperature 
above the standard temperature at that elevation. So, the airport reference temperature we have computed with respect to the two means that is mean for average and mean for the maximum and the standard temperature we have computed on the basis of rate of change of temperature with height. So, if we take the difference of these two then for every 1 degree centigrade rise the length is to be increased by 1 percent. Then another case is the surface wind of course, in the previous uh, lectures we have uh, discussed about the surface wind and we know that uh, there is a head wind, there is a tail wind and there is a cross wind component. So, the effect of all these components are there and we have to look at that what is the effect of that in the case of uh, hand wind component, uh, it creates a breaking effect during landing because it is coming from the opposite direction. Whereas, in the case of the takeoff, it will create greater lift and there is a premature lift. Uh, just before that lift off point, the aircraft will go into the air. Therefore, uh, in this case, uh, uh, there will be a reduction in the overall runway length required at that elevation. Whereas, if we look at uh, the effect of the tail land, then the tail wind will be having its effect in terms of pushing the aircraft in the forward direction. And uh, another problem is that uh, there is a difficulty in the generation of lift required uh, so as to attain height. And in this case, the runway length increases by a very large value. Similarly, we have to uh, understand the effect of the crosswind. In this case, it has two components, one along the aircraft and another transverse to the aircraft. And uh, the component which is along the aircraft may act as a hand wind or as a tail wind depending on the angle at which the air, uh, that wind is attacking the aircraft or the flight path of that aircraft. Uh, accordingly, there will be the effect that what we have seen as a head wind or a tail wind. In the case of that component which is transverse to the aircraft movement that will always create a sway or drift in the movement of the aircraft means it will uh, the aircraft will be moving in the transverse direction away from the flight path. And uh, if this component is very, very high then it may cause the eccentric landing or takeoff condition on the landing strips or the runway, but at the same time it may also cause a drift of the aircraft away from the flight path and which may be dangerous because there may be another flight path moving in the adjoining area in the space and there may be another aircraft which is using that flight path and may cause a collision at that point. Then the other factor which we have to look at is the location and condition of the runway and uh, this is uh, the one factor which we have to look is altitude that is the height and it creates an effect on uh, air density, on atmospheric pressure and on temperature. Uh, the effect is in terms of that if the reduction in air density or atmospheric pressure is there with height above the mean sea level, then it affects the drag and lift forces and therefore, there is a longer runways required at that location. And this rate of change of temperature with height because these are the two things which are correlated with each other. It is uh, at a rate of 6.5 degree centigrade per kilometer height up to a height of uh, 11 kilometer uh, from the mean sea level. So, this is a dec and it is decreasing at this rate that is why minus is being taken. Then if we are moving from a height of 11 to 20 kilometers above the mean sea level then the temperature remains constant at a value of minus 56 degree centigrade. 11 kilometers means we can say that we have crossed the height of uh, Everest uh, by something like uh, around uh, uh, 2 uh, point some kilometers around 2.2 kilometers or so. Then uh, in this uh, in the case when we are moving away further from 20 kilometers that is now we have already crossed after 11 kilometers the stratosphere and we are in the other sphere troposphere. So, in this case if we are moving from 20 to 32 kilometer height then the temperature again is starts rising with height at a rate of 1 degree centigrade per kilometer. So, these are the rates at which the rate temperature is changing as we go above mean sea level. So, so, the altitude requires what? That it requires longer runway length and an increase being taken at 7 percent per 300 meter altitude above mean sea level. That is how 
the value of the runway length will increase. Every 300 meter rise will increase the length of the runway by 7 percent. Now, on the cases of the runway gradient, where the runway gradients are of two types, longitudinal gradients and the transverse gradients. And uh, in the case of transverse gradients, uh, these are provided so that there is a quick disposal of water from the pavement surface and it becomes uh, dry as soon as possible so that there is no slippery condition on the pavement surface for the aircraft. In the case of longitudinal gradient, if the gradient is steep, then it may cause premature lift off or it may induce the structural defects. So, that is why there is a requirement of having a more smoothened longitudinal gradients. Then it will also cause more consumption of energy and it will therefore require longer length of runway to attain the desired ground speed. So, that is what is the effect of uh, more of the longitudinal gradient being provided along the runway length. That is why the flatter runways should be provided and they are desirable. Now, when we look at these runway gradients, the one terminology which we come across and which is used in the design is the effective longitudinal gradient. This effective longitudinal gradient is the average gradient which is computed based on the difference in the maximum and minimum elevation along the runway and then this difference is divided by the total length of the runway. So, we come take the maximum point, highest point and the lowest point on the runway take the difference of that and divide that by the length of the runway and this is what is the effective longitudinal gradient. So, in the case of this effective longitudinal gradient, uh, the rate at which it is creating a change on the basic runway length is the, it is to be increased at a rate of 20 percent for every 1 percent of the effective gradient. So, this is the very big effect for every 1 percent of effective gradient, we have to increase the length of the runway strip by 20 percent. So, what we see is that there are three type of corrections to be provided on the basic runway length related to the mean sea level, the correction for elevation, correction for temperature and the correction for gradient. And these corrections have to be applied in the same sequence as they have been listed here. So, first of all elevation, then temperature, then gradient. We will look at how we do it. Uh, the first correction is elevation correction that is at the rate of 7 percent per 300 meter rise above mean sea level. So, we will compute the value of this correction L e. Then there is a correction for the temperature and this is 1 percent for every 1 degree centigrade rise in uh, at uh, airport reference temperature above the standard atmospheric temperature at that elevation. And then there is a gradient correction rate as L g which is 20 percent for every 1 percent of effective gradient. So, whatever the value we are computing here will go subsequently to the other correction. So, uh, how we will be doing is this that first of all we up go for the elevation correction, we find the required basic run, uh, field runway length which is required for mean sea level and uh, under the standard conditions and say that is L b. Then uh, we calculate the elevation correction rate small l e and we apply to it L b and this will be the uh, new value of the length of the runway strip and say this is L e. So, there is a L e is nothing but L b plus a small L e. Then we come to the temperature correction and we calculate first of all the ART that is airport reference temperature. Then we calculate the standard temperature at the given elevation as T. Then we calculate the temperature correction rate as being shown previously and suppose uh, and this correction is to be applied to the uh, length which we have already computed by the uh, after the first previous uh, correction that is L e. Now, once we apply to this one, the new length will come as uh, that is L t, where L t is nothing but L e plus a small L t. Then we come to the uh, checking of uh, the combined correction for temperature and elevation. So, the combined correction is L t plus L e and this value should be uh, it is going to be ok if it is uh, less than or equals to 35 percent, but if it is more than 35 percent, then we have to go for the model testing and examine whether this is right or wrong. Finally, that is the gradient correction and in the case of the gradient correction, uh, what we do is that uh, this uh, we calculate the effective gradient 
and after calculating effective gradient the correction is find out as LG and now this LG is to be applied on uh, the previous calculated length that is LT and uh, therefore now we have the final corrected length which is nothing but LT plus LG. So this is how we can compute the uh, length of uh, the runway strip at any height uh, for a given temperature and for a given uh, topographical condition translated into the form of effective gradient. So this is what uh, we have discussed today, we, uh, we have just tried to discuss how we can compute the length of the runway strip given certain scenarios what needs to be examined mainly they are uh, it is in the form of the safety concerns. Uh, for normal takeoff, normal landing and for the emergency conditions of engine failure and then in, uh, during the calculation of this uh, runway length we have to apply three type of uh, corrections these are uh, the correction for elevation, temperature and gradient. Uh, we will be looking at the some more features of uh, the runways in the next lecture until then uh, goodbye and thank you to you. Thank you.